and welcome to Heiser Media's coverage of the Disc Golf Open of Pennsylvania, presented by Home Again Disc Golf. Thank you again to Home Again for supporting this coverage in the tournament. We'd also like to thank the Patreon family. You can support Heiser Media on Patreon for as little as $2 a month. I'm Nathan Johnson, and today I'm joined by Lancaster's own Rami Millar. Hi, everyone. Uh, so today on Lead Card Coverage, we have myself, Rami Millar, Harry Chase, sponsored by Discmania, Lucas Oberholzer Hess, sponsored by Westside Discs, and Vincent Suckluck out of Delaware. Yeah, should be a good time. We got four great players that are going to be taking on the Muddy Run Disc Golf Course. It's a combined layout of some mostly golds with a couple silver holes thrown in. So hole one is going to be 418 feet uphill, uh, sponsored by Home Again Disc Golf. Uh, it's a big uphill shot, usually two shots, once to get up there, the second one to approach the basket, and then hopefully one to get in. Yeah. So it looks like you'll be taking the tee first, Ramey. What's what's your plan here? How just ripping one, see how far you can get up the hill? Yep. Plan is to be as straight as possible and get up to the hill as far as I can to make the gap easy to get up through. Yeah, it looks like that one came out a little low, but not the worst result. You can see the silver tee there. As long as you're anywhere past that, it's very scrambleable up and down to, to still save your birdie. Then we got Harry, Harry in here ripping on a DD3. And he gets that height that you're looking for to get up that hill. Yeah, Harry puts a great move on this one. Turning the catch cam, that's always a great sign. <laughs> and here's another young gun that can really, really put one up in there. Yes, Lucas, for those of you wondering, eagled this hole last year in tournament play. So he's, he's looking to give himself a putt again. Looks like he's done a pretty decent job of that <laughs> up to the top of the hill. And Vince it'll be nice to have card. it'll be nice to have Vinny on our card here to see how a lefty kind of attacks Muddy Run as well. <clears throat> For sure, and he's put a good pull on this. Overturned it a bit, but it looks like it squeaked through that left side rough. So he should he should be able to find something there to try to still save the birdie. He's going to go for the forehand kind of backdoor line. Gets caught up a little bit there. He'll probably just have a jump putt up there to save his par about 90 feet or so. And I just he have doesn't... a nice little open shot here. Just throwing a little sea otter up into the basket. Yep. Nice straight putter shot. Fades in at the end. You'll take that 20 footer every day. Every day. <laughs> I think this is Harry. Yeah, Harry's just coming around here with a little forehand chip. Gets up to the basket nice with a tactic. Yep, that worked out great. Still Vince before we get to Lucas's great drive. And that's a great up from Vince. He'll be able to save his par from there. Jump putting for the eagle from 80 feet or so? Yeah, I want to say it's about 80 feet where he's at. Gives it a go. Oh, good line on it, just a little low. Yep. So have that for have that for a birdie three. But first to you. A little nervy fifteen footer to start the day. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But it's uh, it felt good to get it in though. Yep. Always good to start a with a birdie birdie on hole one. It's definitely a reachable hole, only four hundred eighteen feet. And Ooh, what I was wondering what happened there. I heard it hit a lot of chains and then I heard plop on the ground. So it looks like he just hit it too, too solid on that post. That is very unfortunate. These Mach sevens, if you hit that ring around the basket at the bottom of the pole, sometimes you get an unlucky spit out that Luca, just like Lucas got right there. Uh, yeah, it's going to be hard to be, to be confident on his putts after that, but um, I'm sure Lucas will turn it around. He's a, uh, He's a good player. Absolutely. So it looks like hole two, we have sponsored by Home Again Disc Golf as well. Hole two is a 657 foot par four downhill. Um, it's pretty much hit, get it out of the gap. You have a tight gap off the tee and you're just gonna try and get out as far as you can out into the open and just make sure that you don't fade out early and don't turn it over too much and find a parking lot or a road. 
Yep, I think the farther you throw on this one, the more danger that comes into play. But as long as you kind of smooth something out there, distance isn't really a problem as it's very much downhill. What are you ripping on here? So I'm running a special edition recoil. It's got a nice little flip to it. Makes makes me not have to work so hard throwing it. That looks like a great line. A little bit of late turn. Comes back to the left at the end. That's just what you want. Nice 400 plus foot drive right down the middle. Should be a pretty straightforward approach. I'm sure yeah, Harry's looking. Big, I think the biggest part that you have to worry about is just getting through this gap. It's It's a small gap. And if you only have to throw it about a hundred feet to get through the gap, but it can definitely be intimidating when you're trying to throw a driver down a hill to make sure that you get that spot. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to go max distance, the gap definitely shrinks a little bit. I'm sure Lucas has a rive in his hand. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure he's trying to get a, a jump putt at this one as well. He definitely has the distance to reach it. Put a good move on this one. Flip over, punch it straight. Yeah, and that's going to be a probably could jump putt that approach, but we'll see. The, the The low ceiling on these approach shots makes it a little bit tricky as you get down towards the green, but we'll see what these what these players end up going with. Last up is Vince. A lefty line. It looks like that's a little nose up. It is, but it's very flippy disc. Got it up nice and nice and wide. Got to yeah. really get out there and fade. And that'll play just fine. Plenty of room on the right side of the fairway, so he'll still have a shot from here. It's kind of a scary green to approach. Uh, you got the road right behind, a little rocky behind it too. You can really kind of get a skip and get out of there pretty quickly. So you got to be careful about approaching in here. Yeah, that looks like that's what Vince was going for, but he just didn't quite get, didn't quite commit enough. Left a little short. Caught one of those trees, but he'll have a long jump up for the birdie. Harry now going for this just a straight putter or mid range, slide it on up there. Yep, still slid out just a little fast. Yep, this, yeah, the screen can get quick too. Not a lot of grass around there, so the uh, the dirt and kind of pine straw can take your disc a little long if you're not careful. That's more the speed control you're looking for right there. Yeah, yep, and Lucas is going with the jump putt as you said. Yeah, no nice, need to nice run easy it. to pace it in there. Yeah, just slide it up to the basket. Hopefully that one will stick for him. Here's Vince from 35. Just didn't quite give it enough. And Harry, no. I think he's about 25. That's Catches a nice putt it. right there. A little low left, but not a problem on these baskets. Tap nice, out. Nice putt for you. Yeah, feeling sure. real good getting two for two right away. Yeah, that's that's what you need here. The, the, the birdies are definitely there on muddy runs, so you got to make sure that you're you're getting them while you, while you can or you'll be falling behind for sure. Vince will look, be looking to turn it around on this third hole after a, a par par start, but plenty of golf left. And hole three is sponsored by Tono Group. It's a 397 foot par four, very uphill, and then makes a very hard dog laid right. Um, goal of this is really just to get up the hill as, as much as you can and try to get anything off to the right. Makes your approach a lot faster, a lot easier to get up and down to the basket from there. Yep, you'll see some people take, are you lining up this inside Andy line? I am trying to go the inside Andy line throwing a, a baseline hatchet. Yeah, it makes the gap definitely a little tighter, but you can get way up there if you hit it right. Looks like you left and it I a little wide. And left it a little wide, a little early. It'll still play so, though. It will. So Harry's going to be ripping on the PD here. A good pull, also a little wide, but he's got the turn on it. Yep. And that'll play. Yeah, it's it helps to go right as if you can, but like you said, during the, the flyover, the main thing is just get up the hill so you can go straight across. Luke's Lucas go pulled this him. a little bit with a forehand, but he's still got a lot of the way up the hill, which is going to still make it pretty easy to get up and down from here. Yep. And finally, Vince 
nice lefty shape, but he leaves this one well wide. Not the worst kick ever, but that is going to be near impossible up and down being so low on the hill from for a second shot. He'll just be trying to bite off as much as he can here. Hopefully have a an easy pitch up for his par. And I think he's done that. Yeah, he got most of the way up there. And I'm going to try and throw that hatchet again. Got an awkward stance. Just going to throw a little stance still. Flip it up. Just sneaks past the tree and gets up here a little bit. Yeah, that'll be a putt. You'll find that uh, it's a pretty common theme on this course. A lot of tough footing, a lot of rocks in the fairway, a lot of hills. So you got to make sure your standstill game is on point if you want to score well here. Nice shot from Lucas there. He's going to go with a little forehand approach to get up to the basket here. That was a great drive by Harry. I mean, he's almost throws it in, honestly. Almost threw that in. He'll have a tricky, tricky uphill birdie putt left from there. Somewhere in circle two for you. Yeah. Good bid, but. It was a safe a run. Just try to get it up there. Yep. And now Vince from down the hill. Ooh, he's Ooh. trying to give that a go too. Vince is trying to find a birdie quick. Yeah, they can. The pars can stack up quick at this course if you're if you're not on your game. That's a great putt from Lucas right there. Nice twenty five footer confidence builder. Get back on the right track. Now Harry to clean up his birdie. Oh, just low. Yeah, there's uphill putts. It's just tough tough to commit to. He didn't quite give it the height he needed there. But you might notice inside of ten feet, Harry putts upside down with his putter. It took me a few holes to realize that he was doing this, but you might see it and it's that's just how he feels comfortable inside of ten feet to not bounce it off the post and he'll just putt upside down. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen a couple a couple pros do that. I they say it prevents spit outs. I don't know. But I guess whatever works for you, you know, who am I, who am I to come to judge? And the whole four is also going to be presented by the Tono Group. Uh, it's a 441 foot par four, kind of weaves its way through the wood line here. The initial goal off the tee is just kind of get through these first set of trees and kind of get off to the right to give yourself a shot up into the green. Yeah, most players are going to play a forehand like this off the tee. This one's a little wide. It looks like he gets sneaky. He'll, he'll have something from there to try to get up and down. Yeah, you really want to push this forehand as right as possible towards that silver tee pad because that'll leave you a straight shot into the basket. This one's pushing a little too straight, looks like. Just a little bit. Yep, catches those backside trees. Harry with a forehand as well. This is more what you're looking for. Nice inside flip up Thank you. right in the middle of the fairway. That's a great shot. Beautiful. Then we got Vince here with a left-handed shot. Should be a nice little hyzer to get up in there. That looks, looks like nice. he executes it very well. Yep, just a little short of Harry's, but it's right in the middle of the fairway. I'm thinking, you what do you got, flick roller over here? <laughs> yep, we're going to go forehand roller and just try to eat as much distance as we can here. Yeah. Kind of like you... bounce off the roots and hit a tree. Yeah, clip something late, but yeah, that left side of the fairway, as you can see, is just an absolute wall of trees. So that's why you this want to push actually, it right off the tee. This was actually one of these, the eighth hardest hole that we played in the first round. Um, we actually only had five birdies in MPO and one eagle by Travis Dumbach. Yep, I, I was, I got to watch that when he nailed about a 50 foot putt, peered his drive off the tee, and uh, it was a very, it was a sick eagle, I do have to say. Wow, Lucas with a little Lovely. Annie forehand flick right there. That was that was a nice shot. Give himself a putt. And Harry, this is the benefit of having a nice drive. It's just a straight putter, giving it a bid. Oh, Harry's trying to throw one in right now. Yeah, and he's leaving himself some some tester putts on the circle's edge. So we'll see if he can make the correction from the last hole and on that putt there. You got yourself another footer. Oh, hey. That'll work. That'll I'm gonna make work. another highlight for Heiser Media. Yeah. Oh man. Shout out the Sea Otter. Let's take another look. 
that might be outside circle too. Just give it a bid. Dead center. That's a great putt, Ramey. Thank you. That was beautiful. And sea otters fly nice. All right. Aries going to do a little more conventional. Yeah. A little circle's edge. Another tester. Ah, a little uh, bit of an overcorrection there from the last hole. Leaves it high. Lucas, now he's got a maybe 20-ish footer. Not a problem. That one stays in. Lucas would be four for four if it were not for that uh, brutal spit out on hole one. So he's he's definitely in a groove right now. As Vince just also a little short. That's tough. Vince yeah, is Vince just looking is, for that. You're really pressing for that birdie. And I think that makes it a little difficult when you start trying to get on the putting green. Is when you're pressing really hard, you're you're trying to try too hard to make that putt sometimes. Yep. Yeah, he'll just he just needs the first one to drop and I'm sure he'll be able to get things going. So hole five is a par three, 338 foot hole. We're gonna be teeing off on the left side here, actually coming in a little bit more on a hyzer. Yep, you just wanna push something straight, have it fade out at the end if you're a right-handed, backhanded player, and hopefully give yourself a putt. This looks a little wide from Lucas. Ooh, but he gets sneaky on that right side of the fairway and, and that's that's parked. It's a great shot. This looks a little inside. Oh, what a kick. That, that'll Good give you tree. a circle two look. Yeah. If you sneak through all the way to the left, there are no putts over there. The ceiling is just way too low, too many branches in your way. So that was a great kick. Harry, this looks wide also. We'll see. I think he's throwing a method here. Okay. So nice, nice little stable. straight mid. Yeah. Comes back to give him also a circle, circle's edge, circle two look. This is a tough lefty hole. You got to do a slight turnover and then hopefully it doesn't fade out too much. Oh, oh. Vince. That was a weird little tree direction there, but he's got himself another 25 footer for birdie. Circle two look for Harry. Just a little high. Yeah, Harry's just a little off from these circle's edge tester putts. I'm sure he'll dial it in though. But you know who's not off? The man with the mask. The sea otters are going in. Yeah, you are locked in right now, brother. That's a great putt for another birdie. Four down through five is a great start at this course. Oh, Vince. Oh, and Vince, so close. Harry and Vince both just catching a lot of metal so far in this round, and I'm sure they'll they'll dial it in and, and get those birdie putts to start falling eventually. Harry with a good cleanup there for par. And Lucas will tap in his birdie. I think I think he threw a marshal off of the tee, which is just wild that he throws the putter so well on those tight fairways like that. Yeah, such a clean line. Just gets that barely any ground play at the end. I mean, if you've got the distance, that's for sure the play. Speaking of distance. Hole six, par three, 438 foot right down into the open meadow all downhill the whole way the wind swirls all different ways from the tee pad all the way out to the basket it's find your straightest shot and try to lay it up next to the basket without fading out too far yeah if you've got the distance the putter is definitely the play because this hole is just dead straight all the way to the pin but as you said the wind can be unpredictable lucas leaves this one a little left and catches that tree there's pretty much just two trees you got to miss. There's that first one on the right, that skinny straight one, and then that bigger tree on the left. Looks like you clipped something on the right there. I did. I just pulled it over just a little bit too far to the right. Yeah, not the worst kick though. Get you still got you a good amount of distance and should be a, a pretty easy pitch up to save the par. Harry, this one looks a little too stable. It's gonna fade it's out down the hill. It's through the tree and just keeps going. Yeah. Should be easy par from over there for him. This isn't the worst lefty hole, honestly. The ground does slope slightly from right to left. So if Vince can kind of flip, oh, he's going hyzer route? Yeah, going hyzer. Uh, if he gets it a little bit wider, he says it gets him right down to the basket most times. And it, it still worked out pretty well. 
Yeah, that's. I mean, that's closest on the card. It's, it's he's definitely has a putt. I've seen some righties go forehand wide. Um, I haven't seen it work out though. So that was a good, that was a pretty good shot from Vince. Lucas with a nice approach leaves it a little deep, but it's a putt. Looks like you're a little over a hundred feet out. Just a little forehand pitch up there. No harm, no foul. This is definitely a bonus birdie, I would say. I, I yeah, I'd agree with that too. It's it's one of those ones that's great to get, but it's not anything that I ever pencil in and say I'm definitely getting this birdie this round. Yep, you're happy any any time you have a putt, as Vince does here. Hopefully, see if he can convert, and he does. Here we go, Vince <laughs> sneaks it in over the cage for the first birdie of the round. That'll that'll get him going. That's a great putt. Now we'll just have a couple more par cleanups. Lucas from about 15. Not a problem. And you and Harry are pretty much under the basket, so shouldn't be too much of an issue. Just formalities at this point. Yeah, there's that upside down tap in. Yep. I think this is about when he told me about it. Like right after we got done putting <laughs> out on this hole, he told me this is how he putts. And I was like, oh, I never, I've never done that before. All right, hole seven. Thanks Elevation Disc Golf for sponsoring this one. This is a par three, 400 feet, a little bit uphill. You have this left to right slope. For most players, this is pretty much a max distance shot. Um, I mean, we've got some bombers on this card, but you're trying to just play something out, play something straight. If you barely could miss this last tree on the right, you can usually get yourself a circle one putt. Most players are trying to come just inside of it, um, as if you go wide of it, you might. it's hard to come get your way all the way back up the hill. As a lefty, though, this is a very angle-dependent shot. As If he leaves this a little bit on too much hyzer, he could definitely fade down the hill. Oh, he's going roller. He is going to go roller, trying to really get his way back up the hill as the disc finishes up here. It just never quite gets over. Just kind of holds the whole way. Yeah, that's still a great shot. I mean, he got past the basket. Just, yeah, like you said, never quite finished back up the hill. But he'll still have a putt for his birdie. Lucas is going to go with Lucidex Felon here. Yeah, this is uh, the luxury of being a bomber is you can just go straight hyzer on a hole like this. And looks like he left it a little wide, a little short, but still putting. Nice hyzer flip from you. Keeping it low. No ground play, though. No ground play. I think I just need a little more height for it to get the flare that it needs. Yeah, a little height. The grass was also this is early in the morning, so still a little dewy. And uh, the grass here was a little grabby today. So just got to give it a little more air to, to get the distance you need. Gary with a great shot. Gets pin high left. He'll have a circle. Circle's edge putt again for birdie. It seems to be a common theme for him so far this round. Hopefully he can convert there. Yeah, and hole six and seven were actually the th the third hardest holes by for the MPO by birdie rate. Yeah, definitely, definitely a bonus birdie, like we said on the last one. It's they they play long, so you're just trying to give yourself a putt and and see what you can do. You can, looks like you have another circle two look here. See if you can stay hot. Oh, oh, oh. great bid. Just the nubs didn't like that one, I guess. Here's Lucas from circle two, maybe a 40 footer. A uh, little left. Just a little low left. Not quite committed. So let's see if Harry can find the only birdie on the card from about 23 feet, we'll say. Just leaves it low again. That's, that's like three or four of those just circles edge putts, little testers. And he just keeps drawing metal, but isn't quite able to find the chains. And you're going to have a lot of those kind of putts at Muddy Run. Um, you'll, you'll, I'm sure you'll, most players will have plenty of tap in close. You know, if you throw good drives, you'll have birdie opportunities, but you're going to find yourself usually five or six of those circles edge putts, and you got to capitalize if you want to have a good round here. Do you think that has to do with a lot with the, the, the footing around Muddy Run is that you're never in the same comfortable footing, whether or not you're on rocky areas, hillsides? Like, do you find that yourself that way too? Yeah, the, the approaches are definitely tough because of the footing. And I think also just the, 
there's a lot of tight greens here, you know, a lot of protected greens, low ceiling approach shots, and it's tough to put yourself under the basket, you know. Usually, if you're a little off on your approach, you're going to find yourself right around that circle's edge mark. So you got to make the most of the opportunities as you get them. So a bunch of bunch of pars for the card there as we move on to hole eight. And this is a uh, big thrower's dream. It's 681 feet, par four, and you have a lot of airspace out here to just let one rip and get yourself as close to the basket as you can. And then hopefully you'll have an op a nice open shot to be able to chip up to the basket and get an easy birdie. Yeah, the only mistake here is just you don't want to sell your drive off left. If, if you if you leave your drive short left, you'll be pinched off and there really isn't any way to the basket. As long as you get enough distance and, and leave yourself out right, you can just play a big, if you're ready, a big hyzer into the green. Um, and if you're Vince, we'll see. I'll, I'll be interested to see what he goes with. There is there is an inside gap if he still wants to throw the backhand hyzer. It's just a little bit tighter. Lucas is just going to go huge here. Yeah, gets a hold of a rive here and really gets it to flip up and over. Wow. <laughs> that is just absolutely <laughs> <That's> crushed. <laughs> That's a good 550 if I had to guess, at least. Yeah, it's kind of what we hear Mark does. Yeah, that's a tough tough act to follow. But you gave it a good rip. Put a good move on it. Yeah, it got pretty far up there. It's not. It's definitely not 550, but it's... <laughs> It'll play. Solid, four, solid 450. I'll take it. <laughs> That's all you need on this one. Just put yourself in the fairway, and then the, yeah, that backdoor hyzer is is nice and open from there. Let's see what Harry has here. Just a little low out of Harry's hand here. Just doesn't get the the full opportunity for that disc to work its way through that flight. Yep, a little shorter, but he still he still have probably about over three hundred into the green. Just a hyzer here. He just needs to miss that one tree. Looks like he does. Doesn't get any ground play, as seems to be a common theme today. So yeah, we started talking about it on this hole. That this is where we realized that the grass is very Velcro today, and if you're gonna if you're gonna play the skip, you need to play it near the basket. Yeah, at most you'll just get a, a little bit of a slide. Looks like Vince will go to the forehand because that is where the airspace is. Just doesn't quite give it enough. That's a, that's gonna be a scary putt where he's, he's at, as the green does really slope downhill away from the basket my nuclear sea otter that i just got and it's the second time i threw it and it's a lot more stable than i thought it was gonna be <laughs> almost, almost flies like an a2 yeah still did the job though yeah it looks like you're right inside the circle there and lucas is just tossing his approach up there a little bit of ground play but still inside the circle for a birdie putt here's vince now maybe 50 60 footer downhill <sighs> Give it all a really good the basket yeah. all over it just not find the metal yeah just a little off let's see if harry can make a correction here looks like 35 footer Ooh. just leaves it wide kind of a scary comebacker here too nicely done it's a great tap out after missing a putt and not even drawing a medal. It's it's hard to come back at that sometimes. Yep. Yep. Did a good job there. Just committed to it. Put it on the pole. That's all you can do. Lucas with a nice birdie. And you'll have a short birdie putt coming up here as well. Well done. So right yeah. now, hanging in there with Lucas. Yeah, five down through eight is definitely solid. Honestly, on this course, the back nine is really the the scoring nine, in my opinion. So any birdies you can get on the front are are going to really help your score out because almost every single hole on the back is very gettable. So nice tap in for Vince there for his par, and uh, we'll jump into hole nine. So hole nine is 291 feet. Uh, it's pretty much straight there. There's a little gap if you want to go straight at it. Most most of the upper MPO are going to be throwing the hyzer if they have the power to get out and around these trees. Yep, you just want to make sure you keep it nice and wide. Let the disc do the work and come back in. And maybe you'll get a little bit of ground. Nope, again, no ground play. But Lucas, he gives it plenty of air and just sticks it right next to the basket. You're going to try to follow that line. 
And just a little low. Get some ground skip. Not much, but it's still a pot circle's edge. Vince, this is tricky. Is there a lefty? I honestly have never looked. Is there a lefty hyzer line into the basket? Does he have There's to go straight not, at it? Not much of a hyzer line. It's very small gap that he's got to try and get through. Yeah, it looks I'd like almost like caught. to see that little turnover for him. Yeah, that is, it is very, there are a lot more trees on the left side of this green than the right side. So this is definitely an advantage to uh, have that big righty hyzer. Harry also just leaves it a little wide. So, but it's an open putt, you know, the wide is the miss here if you're going to throw that big wide hyzer. So Vince, he's got a tough knee putt here. About 45 feet, doesn't quite give it enough. He'll have to settle for the par. Oh, get down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is tough. For those who don't know, that does not count, unfortunately. The disc does have to come to rest underneath the top of the basket. So that'll be a par for you and Harry with an unfortunate, looks like a high left a little bit. And the basket just pushes it out ever so slightly. Can you guys just get one of those that went off the top and went in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where's it going to be for me? Yeah. <laughs> You're hoping for a little bit of more, a little more luck there. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, Heiser Media just had a video, I think a week and a half ago, that came out where uh, it went off the top of the basket and it fell down the backside of the basket into the cage. So I was hoping I was going to get that same fortune of luck while they were filming. Uh, unfortunately, not this time. Lucas cleans up his birdie, and we'll have a couple of pars from the other two guys. So. A pretty solid front nine. nine for you and Lucas and uh, Vince and Harry are going to look to do some work on the back. Um, thank you everybody for watching. Thanks for joining me, Ramy, on the front nine. Don't go too far though, because we got back nine coverage coming right up for you on the second half of this round one of the Disc Golf Open of Pennsylvania, presented by Home Again Disc Golf. Thank you also to Tono Group, Herbella Designs, and Elevation Disc Golf for supporting the coverage. Like I said, don't go too far and join us in the back nine.